Good evening and welcome to television's most up-to-the-minute topical show. And if you're watching Mr. Nixon, we wish you a speedy recovery. <laughs> In the news this week, uh, latest pictures confirm that Malaysia is importing state-of-the-art British weaponry. <laughs> In Gloucester, detectives hunting in Cromwell Street say things really are getting out of hand. <laughs> and Prince Charles consoles Elton John after his latest hair transplant. <laughs> On Ian Hislop's team this week, an Australian writer and journalist who recently wrote a celebrated article accusing the British of being rude and patronising to foreigners, typical convict mentality, <laughs> Kathy <Lett. laughs> G'day. And with Paul Merton is an actress who, despite her associations with certain panellists, is very much a star in her own right, Mrs. Paul Merton. No, I'm sorry, <laughs> Caroline Quentin. <laughs> so we get straight on with round one, two filmic excerpts per team, Ian and Cathy, something you may have missed. Oh, it's a huge cue to be interviewed by Jeremy Paxman. <laughs> I wonder who he's voting for. Mandela, probably. Voters who found their name on the electoral roll. Mm. Brilliant. <laughs> mm. Is that sort of, what is, is it, what's his, Bert Botha, is it? What's his name? The, the white guy. He's, like, he's putting the election. The clerk. The clerk. Oh, the <laughs> well, he's not like doing it, so like, oh, it's not going in. The election's off. I'm sorry. I can't put the vote in. Yeah. The election's off. It's nice to see a country where they want to have an election. Mm. Mm. <laughs> It is, uh, it is the first free elections in South Africa where uh, 26 British MPs and 150 BBC staff at a cost of several million pounds <laughs> have uh, jetted out to the sun to observe the polling. I'm curious how the first free elections in Latvia last winter failed to generate similar interest. <laughs> After years of brutal white dictatorship, South Africans now just want their country to settle down and become a normal African nation. So a brutal black dictatorship then. Uh, Paul and Caroline, bend over. It's a car. It's a car, lovely car. Yeah. Spotted. Mm. Bad paint job. Yeah. Ooh, all mellow. Very nice. The headmaster of Eton. <laughs> <laughs> God, this looks like fun. <laughs> what do you think, rabbit eyes? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, donkey dick. Um, I think it's, um, uh, I think... <laughs> I think it's... Can I say you're looking particularly nice tonight? <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Isn't it this American boy that's, um, who's about to be whipped in the Singapore region? Yeah. It is the forthcoming flogging in Singapore of uh, Black Britain, Emmanuel Yangtzen, and Chinese Britain, Xu Qi Ho, uh, which has been virtually ignored by the British press, but what's really outraged them is the caning of white American Michael Fay. So apartheid may be dead in South Africa, but it's alive and well in Fleet Street. Uh, meanwhile, in Qatar, another Briton, Gavin Sharon Smith, is due to be flogged. Tory MP Terry Dick said it was absolutely right that he should be thrashed for his immoral behaviour in selling alcohol to Arabs. He should have followed the government's example and sold guns to them instead. Uh, Ian and Cathy, familiar territory for you. It's a jet. Do that one. Oh, it's flying somewhere. Obviously not a UN one. Oh, this is a civil war between NATO and the UN about who should fight the Serbs, <laughs> isn't that right? That yeah. is right. Yeah. Actually, it's, it's very serious this time. They've issued the Serbs an ultimatum. If they don't get out of the IC, there's going to be another ultimatum. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do you notice that Douglas Hurd never pronounces Gurajdi right? He always says Garadzi. <laughs> and he won't help them out. You think he might get their name right? <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Turd. <laughs> um, Yes, it is uh, Bosnia, and uh, NATO requested UN permission to launch airstrikes, but as usual, we're unable to uh, get a decision out of General Secretary Dr. Boutrous Boutrous Ghali, because this time he was flying to Barbados. The spokesman apologised and explained that Dr. Boutrous Ghali was out of touch. That would appear to be putting it mildly. <laughs> uh, Paul and Caroline, bitch of a question for you. Oh, look, poo, jumping. Yeah. <laughs> right. I that every day. And how long have you been a dog, by the way? Just put the dog in the glove compartment, would you? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is poo the dog. It's gone missing. Went down the hole and they can't find it. Is that it? Yeah. Uh, um, poor old Prince Charles. Uh, second bitch he's lost. <laughs> Can you just explain this English thing to me that you guys do? That you keep your, you know, she's kept his dog at home, this poo at home, and sent his kids off to his high class kennel. What's the heck? Public school. Eaton or Harrow or so something? So in Australians, you keep the kids at home and send the dogs off to public school. Then. <laughs> public school, you've probably got a corrugated bottom, have you? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be handy, 
be having a corrugated bottom, wouldn't it? If you were eating biscuits in bed, it'd be somewhere to keep them. <laughs> you know, like custard creams along there. Mm. Four of them. Thank your pardon? Two Oh. It's yeah, yeah, very good for fun. when you get caught after lights out eating the biscuits. You'd get beaten on your corrugated <laughs> bottom. <laughs> yeah. So it wouldn't hurt. Well, you know, of course, because you've been to a public school, haven't you? I did. Didn't teach you much, though, did they? <laughs> I, well, I didn't get metal work O level, no. <laughs> Listen, any time I want a corrugated bottom, I can make the own one. <laughs> Although Ian did know the president of South Africa. <laughs> uh, it's the sad loss, well, it was the sad loss, about an hour ago when we started talking about it, of uh, Prince Charles Jack Russell Terrier, who, uh, volunteers at Balmoral, have already searched hundreds of square miles with no luck, and they'll be starting on the East Wing tomorrow. Pooh's <laughs> uh, identical twin, as it happens, is owned by Camilla Parker Bowles, and Charles has telephoned her regularly since Pooh's disappearance, though, of course, this is not the first time they've discussed the doggy position on the phone. <laughs> whose last engagement was sitting with her master through an interview with Labour MP Roy Hattersley. I've got no idea where the dog could have gone, burped Mr Hattersley. <laughs> uh, local dignitary John Stammers said, I spoke to several people in the village today and they were all very upset. Well, I'll stop speaking to them then. <laughs> which, uh, which barking behaviour brings us uh, sniffing up the end of round one and by an extraordinary coincidence, uh, both teams have scored as many points as they have nostrils. Both uh, Ian and Cathy <laughs> and Paul and Caroline enjoying a cavernous four. <laughs> well, round two is knocking at the door, so let's quickly hide behind the piece of furniture. This is our caption competition. Ian and Cathy, here's yours. <laughs> uh, Paul and Caroline, yours is here. Time then for uh, a furtive peek over someone else's shoulder as we take a look at this week's tabloid headlines. One headline per head, Paul, your uh, entertaining pun, cheap victory. It's this people, isn't it? Because we had Mr. Mm. Sad last week and it's Mr. and Mrs. Fussy this week who were sort of, who uh, have a lot of problems with noises from their next door neighbours. There was one neighbour had a sort of fountain and they complained about the noise of that and somebody else had a dog and the lead scraping against the kennel was making a bit of a noise. And you made that bit up. No, no. Really? Yeah, it's true. Mm. Yeah. You get the same papers in your head. I can't read. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, What's they can. Gardening world. <laughs> this is fascinating. Yeah. Uh, uh, and they can You're think, a fine one. Don't think that it isn't. Droning um, on. And at one point. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, a little lover's tip, okay? Um Sorry, Paul, what were you saying? And he complained about this guy next door who's got these budgies, and the budgies were making a lot of noise, and they took him to court. What I would have done, I'd have wound the neighbours up even more. I'd have fixed tiny little megaphones to the front of the budgies' beaks, like that. So in the morning, you just hear this sort of, cheep! <laughs> That's what I would have done. Mm. But they took him to court, and they lost. They did. It's the case brought against the budgie fancier, Mr. Fred Kennedy was his name. You can get locked up for that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I think he just liked them, that's all. Uh, from a distance in a platonic way, um, <laughs> of, uh, of West Yorkshire. Uh, he was, uh, it was a case brought by his next door neighbours who, in an effort to prove <coughs> that the uh, budgies were chirping too raucously, hired top noise expert Professor Joe McNulty, a genius in all aspects of his field, apart from the fact that he was deaf. <laughs> when uh, Gerald Lumley, counsel for Mr Kennedy, said, I put it to you that you are hard of hearing, Professor McNulty replied, yes I am, thereby depriving everyone of the joke they were expecting. <laughs> The, um, <coughs> the name of the moaning neighbours was Mr. and Mrs. Fussy. Uh, Mr. Kennedy said, there have been problems throughout the time we have lived next door to the Fussies. Still not half as many problems as with the neighbours on the other side, Mr. and Mrs. Shaggy on the lawn. <laughs> uh, Caroline, a story from uh, Down Under for you. Snipnosis. This is the bloke who um, had his vasectomy done, not with uh, an anaesthetic, but uh, under hypnosis. And I thought it would be rather nice if Paul McKenna had done it and uh, made a bit of a comedy turn out of it all, really. And uh, for all this crap, I mean, it's so easy to hypnotise a pin. You've just got one eye, you look at it, 
And as wives, I mean, well, I don't know about the donkey dick over there, but with most of us, you know, it's so easy to hypnotize a penis. You go to bed, all you do is say, are you awake, darling? And it goes to sleep like that. <laughs> Isn't that your experience? No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I've had that experience, but uh, mm. not with Paul. No. <laughs> It wasn't actually the penis that was being hypnotised, but uh, I think All it was those him. bits. No, oh, right. yes. Well, his brain, I think, probably. Is that different? After the operation, he told waiting reporters, <laughs> I felt great, it was a complete thing. Cathy, <laughs> uh, a hellish yeah. question for you. Devil gets acquitted. This is the, um, to do with the satanic abuse. It's been discovered that it only exists in the minds of social workers. The priest who was caught, the social workers said he had satanic books in his library, which turned out to be a copy of Dennis Wheatley. <laughs> they said he had a cross, which was a balsa wood aeroplane, and a hooded cloak, which was his graduation gown. <laughs> Witnesses in the Orkney case still insist that they saw young adults taking part in sexual intercourse with animals and eating each other. That was just the Club 1830 resort up the road. <laughs> It, uh, it took the government inquiry three years and 20 million pounds of taxpayers' money to prove that satanic abuse does not exist. A five-year inquiry into the Tooth Fairy starts next Thursday. <laughs> and uh, finally, in this round, Ian, Coward's rap for BBC Chiefs. The BBC was meant to be putting out a panorama programme um, on Thursday, I think it was, about um, Westminster Council and corruption there. And they found that they just can't put it out. Um, there have been a lot of complaints by Tory MPs, because it's coming up to the local elections, and um, so the BBC have decided there are legal reasons why they can't put it out. The problem about Westminster Council is, you know, there is this huge district auditor's report which suggests that they were up to no good, and they were a bunch of crooks, really, and they were what they call gerrymandering votes. And uh, the district auditor said, it's all right, I'm not going to prosecute, you can put this film out. And the BBC have said, no, I don't think we can really, no, we won't really, at all. Uh, it, is, uh, it is the absurd and nonsensical allegations that the BBC suppressed a panorama programme about corruption in Conservative-held Westminster Council. Uh, Jack Straw, Shadow Environment Secretary, said this decision smacks of great cowardice by the BBC. Mm. What rubbish, and just to prove that the BBC aren't cowards, they're perfectly happy for us to say that Michael Portillo is in fact... <laughs> Sandwich. <laughs> Uh, all of which executive talkies bring us uh, unconvincingly to the end of round two. And the official scoreline, if it's to be believed, uh, shows that uh, the two teams are neck and literally neck. Ian and Cathy and Paul and Caroline both being just the wrong side of nine. Uh, round three follows in a second. So now round three. Our uh, justifiably maligned odd one out round for runaway success stories, which runs the Radio 5 Live. Paul, uh, to uh, make up for last week's easy one, Mrs. Jacqueline Greaves of Loughton, Cheshire, Mr. Chabatara Islam of St. Michael's Square, Gloucester, the Mirror Group pensioners, and Nancy Kerrigan. Where do you say he was, Gloucester? It must be anything to do with this terrible. Um, He's a DIY thing, enthusiast. I don't know who Jackie Greaves is. It's not Jimmy Greaves with a sex change, is it? Um, I know who Jackie Greaves is. Is it something to do with... Uh, I said, I know who Jackie Greaves is. <laughs> <laughs> for you. Is it something to do with compensation of some kind? Not quite. The odd one out is um, the mirror pensioners. For what reason? Don't know. <laughs> Jackie Greaves was the woman who was found um, in a hole of ice. She'd built herself in and then she was rescued. Oh. This man looked over the fence. He's a neighbour of Fred West's. Um, not a very good friend, I gather, but um, right. looked over the fence. That's well, um, Nancy Kerrigan. Yes, I told you that. <laughs> I think the link is... They all sold stories to the paper, apart from the mirror pensioners. That is the correct answer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I might give one to each of you as it were. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's that uh, all have profited from misfortune except uh, for the Mirror Group pensioners from whose misfortune others have profited. 
uh, mentioning no Maxwell's uh, names. Uh, the BBC are in fact cracking down on references to Ian and Kevin Maxwell, just in case programme makers appear biased in their treatment of these two heartless scheming bastards. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Chabatara Islam charged photographers and TV crews for access to his garden, which backs onto number 25 Cromwell Street. Uh, one tabloid newspaper described this as ghoulish profiteering. That was in their 16-page full-colour House of Horror supplement. <laughs> uh, Jacqueline Dreeves is the woman rescued from a Scottish mountain who sold her story to the tabloids for £20,000. <laughs> An angry Sir Hector Munro, the Scottish sports minister, said she should give all the money to whoever found her. So that's 20,000 quid's worth of winner lot for Solo the Border Collie. <laughs> uh, Caroline, for international beauties for you. Uh, Princess Diana. Mm -hmm. Jane Seymour. Not the lovely her. Professor John Catford. <laughs> and Lizzie Power. Oh, I don't know who he is, this Professor Catford. Mm -hmm. But it's... Well, he's the odd one out there because you don't know who he is. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, divorce, um, splitting up. Lizzie Powers is just um, having trouble with uh, Michael Aspel. Um, no, it's not that. It's not that at all. Ooh. I'm lying. It's not. It's she is. She is the. Um, Which one? Her Diana yeah. is. Um, <laughs> don't start. Actually, because I'm trying. Shut your face. You can uh, keep yeah, it up. I can't keep it up. We'll shut. Yeah, I know that. I knew it was a mistake. <laughs> Where were you to our past six oh, this just, morning? I'm trying to answer the question. Well, the nice the man question, is asking me. <laughs> She's the president of Relate, isn't she? Of the marriage guidance mm -hmm. thing. Didn't you relate? No, we don't. Have. <laughs> <laughs> you you, you might learn something. She, she, Thank she, you. Look, the, uh, he, she, she. Oh, come on. I've been sponsored by She magazine. Yes, I am. Uh, well, go on, get on with it. Then. I will. This uh, Catford <laughs> must be like something to do with Relate, like a, uh, a counsellor or a top boss or something like this. That's my answer. And who was the odd one out? Sorry, I missed oh, it in the middle of Jane the Jane Seymour. Now. Jane Seymour because she's nothing to do with Relate. And she's not <laughs> an actress. <laughs> Absolutely right. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the answer is that all of them except Jane Seymour work for the uh, Marriage Guidance Council uh, Relate. <laughs> even though their own marriages uh, have all famously gone awry. Uh, Princess Diana is a patron of Relate. A spokeswoman said, Diana's own marital difficulties give her a better understanding of the problems facing separating couples, such as who keeps which butler and who gets custody of Cornwall. <laughs> uh, Kathy, four bits of skirt for you. Mm -hmm. Imelda Marcos. Mm -hmm. Marla Maples. <sighs> the Pope. <laughs> and the old woman who lived in a shoe. Mm. Pope's trying to get oh. into the Barbara Streisand concert. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it looks like it should be a shoe question, but that's too obvious, isn't it? A what question, sorry? Shoe. It's got a, it looks like it's got to be a shoe because of Melda Marcos's foot fetish, but no, I think it's got to be Catholic. So now Melda Marcos is a Catholic, isn't she? So that she believes in ovarian roulette. <laughs> And the, and the Pope, <laughs> the Pope, of course, believe Rumour is he's a Catholic. Rumour is he's a Catholic. <laughs> and um, the old woman in the shoe, she had millions of, well, was it the old woman in the shoe? Had many children, you know what to she do. She didn't know what to do, obviously. So Marla's, got, children. Marla's got to be the old one out because she's a model turned actress, MTA, which means that she probably had margarine legs, easily spread. And um, <laughs> she had a lot of sex <laughs> and didn't get pregnant until she was married. So I would say she's the odd one out. Does that make sense? Uh, it makes perfect sense, but right it's answer? completely wrong. Oh. Um, <laughs> but you were terribly close with virtually the first word you said. Shoes. I think it's a shoe, shoe question. Yeah. They've all got big shoe collections, except the old woman who lived in a shoe, who's only got one. Is entirely right. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's that all of them have a large collection of shoes, whereas the old woman lived in one. Uh, that's until she promised to vote Conservative when Westminster City Council upgraded her to a fur-lined boot. Uh, Imelda Marcos, along with her now notorious 3,000 pairs of shoes, left behind 500 black bras, 200 Marks and Spencer's black girdles, and 1,000 unopened packets of tights, what some Tory backbenchers would give. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, finally, Ian, name the odd one out here. Eurotunnel director Christopher Garnett, Gillian Telfall solicitor William Garnett, Alf Garnett, and Virginia Bottomley. Um, I think, I, again, um, I do know this. 
The answer is Alf Garnet, because Virginia Bottomley's maiden name was Garnet, and she is actually related to these people. He's um, Gillian Terforth's solicitor. I don't suppose he's anybody's solicitor <laughs> nowadays. <laughs> That man runs Eurotunnel, in the sense that he opens it every couple of years. Yes. And then says it'll be open in another couple of years. And um, but they're all relatives of hers, um, hence their proficiency at their jobs. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Uh, it's that they're all uh, members of the Garnet family, uh, with the exception of Alf, a fictional character, who began by horrifying the nation with his stupidity, but uh, in the end proved popular. Rather like John Major's career in reverse. <laughs> William Garnett shot to fame as the solicitor who tried to prevent Gillian Tailforth being known as that actress who gives blowjobs on the A1. Unfortunately, <laughs> he lost the case, which was extremely bad news for that actress who gives blowjobs on the A1. <laughs> uh, all of which sibling rivalry marks the end of this third quarter, and the high-tech neon scoreboard in all its complexity reveals that uh, Paul and Caroline are miles behind with 11, while Ian and Cathy are narrowly ahead with 13. <laughs> Our final missing words round has been patiently waiting for its big break for the last 20 minutes, so why not give it a go? Well, there are a number of reasons, but uh, we're going to anyway. This week's guest publication, from which an undisclosed number of headlines are taken, is the controversially hard-hitting Hairdresser's Journal International. <laughs> uh, no hope is lead-off, so uh, Paul and Caroline, that means you. What packs out Wembley? Barbara Streisand. Is not the right answer, <laughs> and it's not your question anyway. The Babs Streisand. Barbara's nose? No, it's not Barbara or Bad Streisand. Uh, it's not Paul Merton, no, that was the London Palladium. Oh, right. And he only half filled it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Dunno. <laughs> Couldn't care oh, less. <laughs> oh dear, he's not playing anymore. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's hair industry, is the answer. Uh, hair industry. <laughs> uh, next, back to basics for what? Uh, back to basics for um, British hairdressing industry. <laughs> Hairdresser's health is actually the answer. I'll give you one for that. Why? Uh, well, I mentioned hairdressing. I, I panicked. It's in uh, there. <laughs> <laughs> next, uh, everybody's miserable except us. Say who? Hairdressers. Say sugar sweet couple sitting opposite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> English uh, no, hairdressers. You were, well, no, they said hairdressers first. So I'll have to give them the point because uh, crimpers is actually the answer, which is slang for hairdressers. Uh, Smith goes in search of what? Personality. <laughs> Policy. Good, good answer. Beta. Yeah. Beta. <laughs> Smith um, goes in search of Chris. <laughs> Smith Brandy. goes in search of Wesson. Uh, <laughs> we're getting uh, more, more and more uh, obscure now. 4% swing is the uh, answer that you were not getting anywhere near. Ian and Cathy... Why are you wearing that suit? It looks like you're auditioning for a Merchant Ivory film. <laughs> you won't get it. I uh, could see you from the nipple down. I mean, well, you have this reputation of you being the great sex god, but we never... I mean, we don't know. You might have padded underwear. Well, you might have sandals and socks on under there. I mean, isn't it true, Caroline? How can we tell if he's a sex god? <coughs> oh, I see. <laughs> anyway, sorry, where were we? Have we? Um, <laughs> yes, very good. Stand by. Howard opens what? End. <laughs> is, is it pensioner's handbag with crowbar? Thanks, <laughs> please. Breaking, breaking into someone's uh, handbag was the closest new front over crime. Uh, BBC diverts £75 million into what? Tory central office. <laughs> You're going to suck up to them, do it properly. <laughs> is it a bid for two new channels? I think it's regional programming, isn't it? It is regional programming, incredibly. Next, uh, Judge grabs lager from what? Mini bar in his wig. Jura. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Any sort of juror, particularly? Drunk juror. Drunk, Drunk juror. Well, one point each, probably. And finally, MPs fall under what? Secretary. <laughs> but it's three words. It must be number 37 bus. Number 78 bus. 64. <laughs> 29. 
this, uh, this could go on for some time. Really. 31. Uh, no, put buses from your mind. Fall under hairdresser's spell. 4.15 from Paddington. <laughs> 4.45 from Paddington. Uh, uh, spell, yes, I'll give you one for spell. Spell of uh, star witnesses, in fact. Which, uh, idle whimsy, brings us uh, meandering to the end of tonight's War of Words. And the sad story is that this week's uh, April Fools are Paul and Caroline with 14, and this week's May Flowers are Ian and Cathy with 21. Mm. <laughs> anyway, it's not the winning that's important, Paul. It's the look on your face when you lose. <laughs> you know, after seven series, I still haven't got used to the experience. <laughs> uh, congratulations to our winners, uh, all the rest of Sir Richard singles to our losers. Uh, but... Uh, <laughs> There does remain one final irritation in the shape of our caption competition. Uh, Ian and Cathy, what did you do with this? Look, I've got John Selwyn's gummer stuck up my trunk. <laughs> <laughs> it's a BT introduced new novelty phone. <laughs> and here's an elephant using it. <laughs> uh, thank you, Paul and Caroline. Uh, what did this do for you? It's the uh, Pooh Kidnap Identity Parade. <laughs> I think the dog at the end that's looking at the others is saying, um, and this is your idea of a good day out, is it? <laughs> <laughs> and the one in the middle saying, I really like his use of light and shade. <laughs> <laughs> this is his dog period. All <laughs> <laughs> he's saying, don't tell anyone, I've just had a piss in a fire bucket. <laughs> On, uh, on which delightful note, uh, we say thank you to our panellists, Ian Hisloff and Cathy Lett, Paul Merton and Caroline Quentin. And I leave you with news that the man who ghostwrites all of Geoffrey Archer's novels has finally admitted that he delegates the job. <laughs> Sport, and after a hard winter in Chelmsford, Graham Gooch admits that perhaps he should have gone on tour to the West Indies after all. <laughs> And Deng Xiaoping makes a guest appearance in the Chinese version of Baywatch. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>